The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And welcome to another fascinating episode of The Meltdown. I'm Norm. And I am Jeff. We are your hosts and um, confidants. You can tell us anything you want and we'll keep it to ourselves unless we feel like airing it. <laughs> um, so you know what? Here's the thing. Today's show is all about spammers and scammers. Mm. Now, I don't think we're, we're not going to really focus on spam so much because, uh, you know, it's, it's, everybody gets spam. You get spam every day, right? You get spam every day. Like, I can't tell you how much spam you get. I and mean, the more email accounts you have, the more spam you get. It's mm. the way it is. Mm. It's part of life. And, and, and most people now know how to recognize spam, right? Because half the time things are spelled horribly or sentence structure is horrible or it's, or it, you know, I'm Norm, you know, that's my name. I get scams. Hey, Bob Tuma. <laughs> I'm like, not me. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, like you just know. It's spam. We've got some interesting facts on scams. We've also got some tips on what to watch out for. Plus, we got Lou Saracino here for a meltdown minute with Lou. And then we've got some scams, uh, some phone scams, and we're going to actually let you listen to them. Uh, so uh, it's so stupid. Some of these are so stupid, but you'll listen to them. And hopefully, when you get these calls, you can just go, eh, it's bullshit. <laughs> All right, so let's do what we always do first thing here on The Meltdown. And Jeff, I haven't let you say a single word um, <laughs> since I started. So okay. did anything you want to say? These scams, they obviously must work. They must be making money, which yep. is not good, obviously, because it's criminal, basically. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I feel the same. Yeah, older people in general. I mean, there's a lot of people that are 70, 80 that are very computer savvy and can recognize yeah. a scam like that. But you're right. The elderly in general are definitely vulnerable. And uh, um, man, these people that take time for the scams, I just wish they'd get a real job that's but legal. The one that we're going to cover is one that uh, the one that apparently comes from Microsoft and it's you get a phone call mm. saying that your computer, you know, uh, your computer um, actually sends a code right every right. time you use your computer and we found malicious activity and mm. it needs to be fixed. Yeah. And and I've actually had someone uh, in my extended family mm. Who phoned me and said I just got this call from Microsoft and they say there's a problem with my computer and they want me to call them back and they want all this information. It's like, no, they will never call you and say anything. <laughs> yeah. This is not good. And 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 so you know, and and she's a fairly savvy person, so it can happen to anyone. Yeah. The 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 more realistic it sounds, that's when more people get taken. Yeah. And let's study this some more with our meltdown fun facts. <laughs> We have an awful lot of information to get uh, to you, so let's get through this fast. Um, we're gonna call this spotting fraud and scams, how to protect yourself and safeguard your finances. Number one, investment fraud. You do not have to necessarily be wealthy to become a victim of a scam. In fact, according to Canadian securities administrators, one third of fraud victims are scammed for less than $1,000, and another 28% are taken for between 1,000 and 5,000. Once you fall victim to investment fraud, it can be very difficult to get your money back. According to the Ontario Securities Commission, one common theme of investment scam typically involves getting you to put up money for a questionable investment or one that does not exist at all. Scam artists usually begin by asking personal questions about your health, family or hobbies, which they then use to refine their sales pitch tailored to your specific situation. Okay, so that's one. All right, here we go. Uh, second one, door-to-door -door scams. Fraudulent door-to-door -door sales calls are another reason why many Canadians lose thousands of dollars each year. Keeping your door closed and not allowing an unsolicited salesperson into your home is the best way to protect yourself. It is also important to keep the following in mind if you receive an unsolicited sales call to your door. Fixing something. 
If someone appears at your door and claims to be there to fix something, ask yourself, did you request this house call? <laughs> if you did not request it, this is most likely a scam. Do not let them in. Collecting for charity. Always ask for identification when you are approached to donate to a charitable organization. When in doubt, contact the charity and verify with them directly. Information collection. Never provide your personal or financial information to an unsolicited salesperson at your door. Buy something? Most Ontario school boards discourage students from selling items door to door. If you are in doubt, check with the school board directly. Sign for an offer. Do not sign any papers on the spot. Always contact the company directly to verify any claims. And Jeff, maybe this is one you've experienced. It's one that we've experienced. The door-to-door -door energy contract people. Mm. You ever experienced that? I haven't personally, but I have heard of it. They come to your door. I've seen them. They come in pairs typically. They've got clipboards. They've got their, mm. you know, whatever energy company they're with. And, and you know, they want to see your bill. They want to see It's like, no. <laughs> Sounds legitimate, but, but, but it isn't. The problem is again. Think of the you know very senior people yeah. who you know think, oh, I get you know, I, it looks you know, they look, yeah. they sound. I mean, they've got. It's it's just, just we really question everything, folks. Yeah. Um, if you receive a knock at the door and it's an energy company salesperson asking you to sign or renew a gas or electricity contract, it is important to know who you are dealing with. The Ontario Energy Board lists the following four things to remember if you are approached to sign an energy contract. Number one, as of January 1st, 2017, no one can sign you up for an energy contract while they are at your home. They can leave information, but are not allowed to leave a contract. Number two, always make sure you get a business card and look at the salesperson's ID badge first. Number three, don't share personal information. For example, your gas or electricity bill. An energy retailer only needs this information if you decide to enter into a contract. And number four, energy retailers are not your utility company, the government, or the Ontario Energy Board. The OEB does not go door to door. So the next time they, those pesky buggers come and knock and you just tell them, hey, fuck off. <laughs> but, you know, you can do it, you know, if you want to say something else like fuck out, that's up to you. <laughs> Okay, Choose telemarketing. What's that? Choose your own swear. Choose your word. own swear. You could even say uh, tarmac like Jeff does. <laughs> tarmac. 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 Stepan tarmac. Tarmac. Stepan tarmac. Or l'aeroport. Tarmac. Telemarketing scams. Telemarketing scams range from emergency and investment scams to prize, vacation, and, of course, tax scams. One of the most common types of telemarketing scam is the CRA tax scam, where suspects pose as representatives from the Canadian Revenue Agency and contact victims with regard to allegedly overdue taxes. It is important to note that the CRA will not contact anyone who owes taxes in this manner. Uh, when it comes to the CRA or any kind of government, you get uh, typically a registered letter uh, you know, it's got to be through the mail because you need a paper trail and uh, they want to make sure that when they've sent it to you, you sign for it, they know that you've received it mm. and they would never phone you or text you or, mm. or send you an email. That, you know what I mean? Yep. Okay. Uh, here we go. Last, uh, the last kind of fraud, online fraud. Now the internet is a powerful tool that connects people and spreads ideas throughout the world. It has the power to bring education, companionship, banking, and shopping directly into your home, but unfortunately, it can also bring unwanted fraudsters and scam artists as well. You're angry. No, I, <laughs> I turned it with purpose, Jeff. <laughs> the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center lists the following tips to protect yourself online. Number one, do not reply to any email that requests your personal information. Contact your financial institution immediately and report your suspicions. Number two, check for the embedded hyperlink in the suspicious email by hovering your mouse over the link to verify the address. You'd be surprised how many times, well, always, it's completely different. Mm. Um, or, you know what, if it's like, let's say it was from Microsoft as an example. Yeah. Um, it'll say Microsoft in the link, but it'll be some weird letter or number mm. before or after or some, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they've done something to change it. And some people think, oh, I saw the, I saw the word Microsoft in there. <laughs> and so I, I pressed the button. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, do not click on any attachments. They can contain viruses and spyware. Beware of unsolicited emails from individuals or organizations prompting you to click on an attachment or link. 
Now, it's important to note here that you can get spam email from people you know and people in your address book, right? Because if their uh, email program has been compromised or if their email address has been compromised, you'll start getting emails. I, I get these ones uh, all the time. I get them, they say, uh, from, from someone I know, and it's just one line that says, hey, thought you'd be interested in this, and then there's a link. I know for a fact that if anybody sends me anything, they're going to explain mm. what it is, you know? Not just that I'd be, and, and the wording is just, it's, it's simple. If you, if you didn't know scams, you'd go ahead and open it. But I'm saying don't. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, I get that from, from certain scammers, you know, and they, of course, use a friend's name or whatever. And yeah. it's like, hey, I thought you'd be, usually that's the line. I thought you'd be interested in yeah. this. Um, and, yeah, and then there's this right away. long link and you go, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, spam for sure. We can't stress this enough. If, if you think you've been, you know, fraudul fraudulently uh, hacked or whatever, contact Equifax and TransUnion to place fraud alerts on your name if you suspect you are a victim of identity theft. And identity theft is 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 huge these days, like mm. absolutely huge. Yeah. Um, you know, once again, uh, I think most of you know what what scams a scam. You, you know, you 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 know how your friends talk to you. You know how you talk to your friends uh, when you receive emails that are suspicious. You know, there's nothing wrong with emailing your friends. Say, hey, did you did you send me an email saying this? Mm -hmm. If you're not sure, when in doubt, check it out. Yeah. Oh, I like that. When in doubt, check it out. When in doubt, check it out. Let's do it together. When, when in, in doubt, doubt check, check it, it out. out. And now <laughs> it's time for a meltdown minute with Lou. I'll tell you the truth, I love scammers. I think it's amazing. I'm always impressed by the level of complexity that these guys put into these scams. It's like an Ocean's Eleven movie with way more assholes. It's unbelievable. And I can't help but think, well, you're clearly smart. I don't know, maybe you put a resume together, apply for a couple of jobs, you knob. My point is, folks, as long as there have been people, there have been other people who take advantage of those people. It's human nature. You might be familiar with something called a Ponzi scheme. Right around the turn of the century, one of my people, I've never been prouder, tried to sell a bridge he clearly didn't own to a bunch of other immigrants, and it worked. That is amazing to me, ladies and gentlemen. Although a lot of people confuse that with a Fonzie scheme, which is uh, when you try to sell a bridge to Gary Marshall, or to Potsy, but then it would be a Potsy scheme. I'm pretty confused right now, I'm gonna be honest. Thank you very much, Lou. And now for some meltdown stupid stupidness. Stupid, stu really stupid. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to have some fun with scams um, because there's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, they're calling on your home phone, calling on your cell phone. Um, here's one. Um, we, we, every once in a while, you know, your phone rings. You, I, I don't. If I don't recognize the number, Jeff, I don't answer. I figure if way. it's important, they'll leave a message. I'll get back to them. So this, you know, you get these calls all the time from these area codes. I don't know where they are. Uh, so I don't bother answering. And then you listen to your message and um, you hear this message in, 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 in Chinese. It's in oh, Mandarin, in fact. You get that a lot? Yes. Yeah. Now, wow. you know what that, well, I'm going to tell you what that's all about. But first, let's have a listen to that message. Okay. So, that, so we've all had that call, right? And, and you wonder what is that? My, my wife actually said at one point in time, oh, that's just Mandarin calling the restaurant <laughs> with specials or something because we like going to Mandarin. We were just there yesterday, in fact. Uh, great buffet. If you haven't been there, go to Mandarin. But anyway, no, it's not the Mandarin calling. What that message is, and I did some research on this, it is supposedly from the Chinese embassy. Hmm. They're calling to tell you that you've had a package waiting for you at the embassy for X amount of days and that you need to uh, pay some money, hmm. you know, because it's been sitting there. You need to pay some money and then go pick it up. And of course, you'll pay the money over the phone. You go to the embassy and they'll say, what are you talking about? <laughs> what package? <laughs> and then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> so so avoid that. If you hear this message about the, a package waiting for you at the Chinese embassy, don't. 
And if you don't understand the message, you don't have to respond either. Yeah, so you'd have to actually speak Cantonese or Mandarin. Uh, whichever, Man, uh, right, you'd have to speak Man, Mandarin to do it. Yeah, and, yeah. This, and this scam originated uh, in the BC, Vancouver wow. area. So this was very, very, very big in, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's, you know, gone its way across the country because mm -hmm. there are <laughs> other Mandarin-speaking people yeah. all throughout Canada. Uh, okay, so now we've got a very popular one in our country, the CRA scam, where you are phone called, uh, left a message telling you that you owe taxes and you better pay up now. <laughs> so let's listen to some audio of the CRA scam. Hello, this call is from the Tax Department of Canada Revenue Agency. The reason behind this call is that there is a case, a lawsuit, that is getting filed under your name the moment you receive this message. I need you to get back to me on my department division number. Now, if I don't hear a call from you, we will have to issue an arrest warrant under your name and get you arrested. So get back to me as soon as possible. Thank you. Sounds like Stephen Hawking. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. You are owe me $50,000. <laughs> okay, first of all, folks, if you get that message, notice, uh, you know, we have to issue arrest warrant. They forgot the word, uh, and... We all have to issue an arrest warrant. You know, anyone who's leaving you a serious message is going to make a mistake like that. Oh. The second thing is they don't issue warrants under your name. They issue warrants in your name. Uh, now, but this whole thing is just BS. And, and, and it's, it's, it's sister. It's sister is the uh, scam in the States. The sister, I should say, it's sister scam in the States is the IRS, which uh, does exactly the same thing pretty much. Let's have a listen to that. Hello, this call is officially a final notice from IRS, Internal Revenue Service. The reason of this call is to inform you that IRS is filling a lawsuit on your name because you had tried to do a fraud with the IRS Internal Revenue Service and we are taking a legal action and we are issuing an arrest warrant on your name to get more information regarding this case file. Just call us back on our department number. 773-536-1343. I will repeat it. 773-536-1343. Thank you. You tried to do a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to do a fraud. And these and the IRS is going to issue a warrant on your name. Not under, but on. What I think the correct term is in. The warrant is in your name. You yeah. think these people would have good grammar? Well, this is the thing—they don't, because a lot of these scams are not originated. They don't originate in North America. Mm. A lot of these scams, uh, scams, uh, from the research I've looked at, uh, a lot of them originate in India. Mm. And and there's so many. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> you know, first of all, you know, if you're going to get a phone call from anybody, I think you would get a phone call from the actual body of government itself and yeah. not you know not to, if you go on the any website you, you'll know this that the cra in canada the irs in the states they do not contact people by robocall no. they don't uh, they just don't i love how when they talk about issuing a warrant for your arrest uh they they, they warn you like they give you enough time to get away <laughs> we'll be over in two hours <laughs> thanks yeah. uh, get me to the border <laughs> Yeah, but just, just think, just think, people. Well, seriously, okay. And this is so stupid. So we have uh, here's an interesting one. Um, this is from the Madison, Wisconsin Police Department, and here's a here's a scam. Hi, this message is intended to contact you. My name is Dennis Gray, and I'm calling regarding an enforcement action executed by the U.S. Treasury, intending your serious attention. Ignoring this will be an intentional attempt to avoid initial appearance before a magistrate judge or a grand jury for a federal criminal offense. My number is 360-234-2061. I repeat, 360-234-2061. I advise you to cooperate with us and help us to help you. Thank you. Help us help you get arrested. Help us help you. <laughs> now, we're going to arrest you because you've done something horribly wrong. But if you call us back, we'll help you. You know what? We'll, I got an idea. I don't want to see you get in trouble any more than anybody else does. A couple of thousand bucks. <laughs> Let's call this thing clear. All right. So, you know, 
when we talk about the we talk about the CRA scam, the IRS scam, and I mentioned this to you just briefly, but here's how that all plays out. Anyway, so this guy was having a little bit of fun with this person and just, you know, stalling and, and repeating things incorrectly so that the guy would have to repeat and repeat and repeat. But hmm. The bottom line is what they get you to do is, <laughs> this is the IRS supposedly, folks. They ask you to go to a Target or a Walmart and buy gift cards. <laughs> because when you come out of the store, you know, you've spent the money, you've given the money to Walmart, um, and you give these people the, the gift card number on the phone and they basically suck that money into their own accounts. And I, I you know, I, I guess they try to pass it off as a partial payment, to, you know, in good faith, you know, if you give us a couple hundred dollars now, you know, well, there's no, you know, whatever, I mean, come on. If, if you think the IRS or the Canadian government is going to say, <laughs> tell you what, we'll take a Canadian tire gift card. <laughs> you know, we won't send you to jail. Yeah. No, no, no. And hey, if, if you got a Wendy's one, that works too. <laughs> Bob in accounting loves Wendy's. <laughs> we got repairs to do around the office, so a Canadian Tire gift yeah. card would be most appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is absolutely ridiculous, folks. And, and, and this, is the, this is the stupidity of it, right? It is so blatantly stupid. Now, you know what? I'm like the next person who likes to have fun with telemarketers. I've done this in the past, and I'll, I'll do it again, I swear. If I ever if I ever am dumb enough to answer the phone when I don't recognize the number and I, I'm engaged with a telemarketer, I'm going to make it so bad. This one guy online, and we wanted to show this to you. I wanted to show you a video clip of what this guy did to this telemarketer, but unfortunately, we didn't get permission to use it, so I'm not going to. But uh, essentially, <laughs> there was one line where he says, I'm calling to you about your unpaid taxes. And he goes, I've never been to Texas. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is a bit of audio from this, uh, the Microsoft scam in which they basically call you and tell you that, you know, uh, there's a, an identification number with every computer and that, you, you know, there's suspicious activity on your computer. Anyway, uh, in this clip we're going to play you, um, it, the, this guy's being passed from person to person and he's asking why and the other people are starting to get really annoyed with him, the, te the telemarketers. So just have a listen. Yeah, hello? Yeah, hello. Yeah, did you type Team Vivo? Who, who's this? This is, this is uh, you're talking with the senior. Oh, okay. What, what happened to the other person? I'm sorry, he's just a new. He's just new. The tab, the team we will. So, so you're Microsoft and you're calling me with a new person? Why is that? Uh, actually, you know, he's very new. He just joined the company. So where are you guys from then? This is called from the technical department of California in San Francisco. Okay, and your name is what? My name is James. James. Okay. So, so what can I do for you? Now, did you type teamvivo.com? Yeah, I've been on your website. What do you want me to do now? I have a lot of viruses. Can you help me fix it? How old are you? I'm 45. How old are you? 45. Correct. And you're saying that you have lots of viruses in your computer. What kind of a security do you have for your computer? AVG. AVG. AVG is just an antivirus. It's an antivirus which can protect your computer from the normal viruses, not the infections. Okay. So what can you guys do for me? You just go to the whatever, um, my executive will be tell you what you need to type, okay? You just type teamweaver.com over there. Just type it over there, teamweaver.com. Okay. So, like, I'm on that website, what do I do now? Uh, I'm sorry? I'm on that website you guys told me to go to, what now? Yeah, so what can you see? You just let me know what can you see exactly on the screen. It says log log in. Do you want me to like, are you going to log into my computer? No, not at all. You log in like there will be something on your computer. There's something that says log in, log me in here. Check it out. Yeah, okay, it says log me in here. Log I... in. 
I have something that says log in here. I'm not log me in. No, not log me in? No, 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 no log me in. You need to type, no, no, not that. You need to type teamviewer. Oh, teamviewer.com. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you have access to my computer. What, what do you want now? What the hell you're talking about? I'm on, I'm on your site. Did I say I need to access your computer? Did I say? But you're, why, why does Microsoft want to have access to my computer? I have a couple of viruses. Are you mad or what? No, I'm, I'm trying to actually be... Are you mad? I'm trying to be very helpful with you guys, but I don't understand... I think you are mad. Why, why are you giving me attitude? I'm trying to be very helpful here. I'm on I'm on uh, teamviewer dot uh, dot coms, uh, and I, I do I have to make an account or something, or what do I do? Don't don't try to be extra smart. Oh. Oh, oh, I don't know what that means. What do you mean by that? Hello. 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 Hey, um, just, 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 just letting you guys know that uh, I'm actually right beside a police officer at the moment, and uh, you, you are currently uh, actually assisting in uh, in a case of going against you guys. Just be aware of that. <laughs> yep, yep. You are currently actually literally on the phone with the police officer, so I'm just letting you know that. So uh, I understand that this is a scam, and I would like to understand why you were calling me. Why did you call here? You called me. You called me. You called me. Hey, yeah, why did you, why did you call here? You called me. Call here again. Okay? I don't want a phone call from you again, and uh, just be aware that you have a, I have a police officer beside me. Don't call here again. <laughs> <laughs> so, there oh, you go. Man. Well, you've been caught. <laughs> okay, so now you know something's up. Uh, from one of the things that, that uh, I was saying to Jeff during the call was, uh, you can tell that it's it's not a local call. It's 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 obviously an international call because of the delay between the time uh, the gentleman speaks and the other people respond. So with that delay, you can tell. And the, and this is what these scams are. They're they're overseas. What they want to do is they want to get into your computer. They want to access you know banking information or what have you. And it's uh, it's it's just insane, just insane. <laughs> my favorite part was when something like, uh, "Yes, I have a virus in my computer." How old are you? Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people who are in their forties are especially having trouble with viruses. That's Those in the twenties are doing okay, but yeah, you're yeah. forty-five. Well, that answers a lot. Well, no wonder you have so many viruses. Yeah. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, folks. Well, listen, we've had a blast with you. Uh, remember, if keep your eyes open and your wallets closed. Until next week. Uh, I'm Norm. And I'm Jeff. And this has been The Meltdown. See you later.